Okay. Hi everybody, my name is Rebecca Honig and I'm here today to help you to do a fun project, a colorful collage. And I expect most of you or many of you have done collages, it may have been a while. Uh, if you can think back to days when you may have made a valentine or cut out anything and glued it onto something else, you were making a collage. So basically collage comes from the French word coller, which means to glue. And some of the first artists who started using collage as an art medium were people like Pablo Picasso, you might have heard of him and others. And you really need very little. The three things you definitely need to have are a pair of scissors. And I have a whole array here. Uh, my good ones are at Center on the Hill. So some of these are kind of dull. This is a kitchen scissors. I mean, it's not for cutting meat, but just I keep it in the kitchen to cut open bags. Could be really any scissors this is kind of a sewing scissors any scissors that you have that can cut paper and the other thing you need is glue um, and I have a whole assortment of glues here and um, I like using the glue that is uh, called a glue stick if you have one of those and it hasn't dried up those are a little bit neater to work with but any other kind of glue works fine Rubber cement, maybe not so much unless you have a well-ventilated area. <laughs> so, and the next thing you'll need are, um, you'll need something like a substrate, meaning something to glue your things onto. It could simply be a piece of paper. This is like plain old copier paper. It's better if it's harder because the glue will tend to warp or maybe even go through the paper. So I'm going to use today, this is, a piece of cardboard that was on the back of a watercolor pad that I had. So if you have um, you know legal pad or any kind of pad of paper and you just take that brown uh, cardboard off the back, if you're getting things in boxes you can cut a piece of corrugated cardboard. Um, if you have you know any kind of paper will do. And those are the three things and then how do you start? Well, I like to start with inspiration, but before we do that, I just want to point out a few different collages. This was made probably by a five-year-old, and I would call this a collage, even though really I would call it a snowflake. Did you ever fold a piece of paper? And so it's a collage because this white snowflake is glued onto the black, thus it's a collage. This is from an eighth grade student, former student, and um, I wonder if you can tell how she made the circles here. So if you happen to have a hole puncher, that can be a fun tool to use as well. Uh, and finally, this was one I made as a sample for a teen group I was working with. And it's hard to see, but I don't know if you can read what word. Can you see what word it is? So the word was joy. And this one combined, I did it on an actual, um, canvas panel and it involves some painting but almost everything else just came from old magazines. So as far as the papers that you're going to use to cut and glue, anything will work. I like to use old calendars. Here's, um, or not so old because it's 2020, this is Easter seals. I get a lot of calendars in the mail for some reason. Audubon, you can use magazines. This is from the Delaware Art Museum. This, I don't think I'll ever be going on a cruise now, but this is advertising cruises. Um, one thing I noticed after I started teaching at Center on the Hill, teaching collage, is things that I used to just toss in recycling. Can you tell what this used to be? Tissues. A Kleenex tissue box. And I was like, wow, that's a beautiful marble pattern. I could use that. So it's going in my collage bag. I drink a lot of this particular tea, and I thought, oh, I could use that cardboard. Then I opened it up, and guess what's on the inside? I don't think this is true in most. Uh -huh. I happen to do Yogi tea, so I had taken one, and I haven't glued it on or used it for collage, but used it kind of like a coloring book. Um, other good things are old maps, and labels, like address labels that many of us get in the mail. Any other kinds of stickers that you happen to have? If you're 
a little strange like me and you save your fortune cookie fortunes. Or again, the same that same brand of tea and a few others, the tea bag has a piece of paper with a message. Let's say this one, that's too long. Let's see if there's a short one I can read. They, uh, I don't know, happiness is actually an art of living which is in us. So that's a good one for today because I believe everybody's an artist and collage is a great way to start. This is from a paper bag um, that I bought something and had this bag, wrapping paper, any of those things will work. So the first thing is, where do you start? You have all these materials. Personally, I like to work what I would call intuitively and I don't think too much about it. I just get inspired in the case of this one, there were two things that inspired me. I don't know if you can see that. A hummingbird and a map. And that was kind of my focus. So I will just, I'm thinking spring maybe. So I'm just leafing through this uh, bird calendar. I don't want a wintry one. Um, well, that's a shore bird like the one on the cover. So I guess that's good. I probably won't get to the beach this summer, unfortunately, who knows, but I can make a spring or summer thing. So I'm going to use this, I think he's a sandpiper. Anyway, I'm gonna use this guy. And what I'm gonna do is I just ripped it out of there. I could start cutting around it and silhouetting, silhouetting it if I want, but for now I'm just gonna leave it like this. I'm not gonna cut around it. And then I'm going to look, uh, let's see, I have some maps here. Let's see, New Jersey's good because that's a local shore area. So maybe I should find some part of the coastline. And you can do this with a ruler very neatly. I am just ripping a piece of New Jersey off the map without really looking at it. Let's see what I got. Seaside Park, Barnegat. Okay, good. I got some beach areas. Um, and I'm going to put that in my pile. And let's see, what else? I think I'm going to put... Hmm, I'm just going to find a pretty butterfly in here. Oh, good, a monarch, because that's one that comes to our area in Jersey Shore. So I've got a sticker of a monarch butterfly. And then because I like to work from chance, I'm going to mix up all my little uh, fortune cookie things and pull one out and see if it works. Mm. I don't know. Good books are friends who are always ready to talk to us. That could be the inspiration for your thing because you can have text and image. You also don't have to have text. A lot of poets use collage. Let's see. Uh, I don't see anything inspiring me that has to do with spring and summer. Mm, a lot of good messages, but they're a little deeper than I wanted. So, I'm going to take one more look. No, I think I'm just going to go with image for this time. So, I could say that my background is going to be white, because this is white, or whatever color this is. This is a little shiny, so in actuality, if you had a plain tan cardboard, it's probably going to work better because it'll absorb the glue, but I'm going to just try it on here anyway. So for my background, I may want to have the whole background be white, which it already is, so I don't have to put paper on it. But my background could also be all, here's a collage workshop from could use the back of that and get a nice blue if I wanted, but I kind of want to save that, so I'm not going to use that. Um, I could put the map back there, but I'm not going to glue anything at first. I'm just going to arrange things. Now, I'm putting my bird up to this, and of course it's too big, and I have to think what part of this do I really want on my thing, and I think I'd like all of it that can fit only because then I'll have a background that's blue like the sky. So what I'm doing here is tracing around the cardboard. I have to confess I've never done it this way before. Usually I take a separate piece of paper. So I just traced around the size of my board because I want to cover the whole background. And then I'm going to cut along my lines. 
And if I'm absolutely sure that this is the composition, in other words, I want the bird to be just where it is, and I want to use all of this page, I could now just glue this whole thing down here. But again, I think I want to wait and play. So I have my map of New Jersey here, which is also quite nice. And maybe I like that rough edge. So maybe I want to experiment with putting this on first and just cutting out the bird. So now I'm thinking I'm going to change my mind. Luckily, the map has these nice grid lines on it. So if I want a straight line, and I want to preserve the word New Jersey. I don't even need a ruler. And I could just glue that on. Now I have it horizontal like a landscape, I think because I was using this, but I could think, well, let me change it up. What would happen if I made it vertical? That's kind of nice to have all that shoreline. Now what will happen with my bird? Is he going to fit on there? Maybe not or maybe only part of him, but I really like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and trim this so it covers most of the back. And normally I would take, well, I take a long time, but I could take as much as an hour or two just cutting things out and playing with them and rearranging them. But because I'm doing this lesson for you, I'm gonna speed it up and I am gonna go ahead and glue this down. So I'm gonna use my glue stick. The thing about glue sticks, the most important thing is that they dry quickly, which means you have to put it on really quickly. Ooh, that didn't work very well. I turned it up too much and it was too soft. So I'll try to spread that around. But uh, you want to use it quickly before it dries out and make sure you put the cap on. If you don't put the cap back on when you're done, next time you come to use it tomorrow or something, it may be dried up. Okay, so I have some glue stick on there. I could have glued the board instead. It really doesn't matter. And with the Elmer's glue, I'll, do the ne I'll glue the next thing on with the Elmer's glue just to show you. That would be using just a few drops probably. Now I'm spreading this out and trying to, didn't quite make it to the edge. Sorry about the phone in the background. We're all at home dealing with at home things, right? I don't know about you, but most of my phone calls are, or many of my phone calls are not necessarily people I know or care to talk to. Now I think, I just realized this bird is eating what I think is a sea urchin, so I have to decide since I can't fit the whole bird in, although I could have him going this way, even though the map is going that way. That could be interesting. Hmm. I don't know. Now I'm getting confused. But in the interest of time, I am going to silhouette him. In other words, cut him out. Normally, I wouldn't do this so quickly because it's easier to have the whole thing and cut it down rather than to try to expand it. Sort of like if you think about having a piece of fabric, if you cut it in half and then you decided you wanted to use the whole thing as a um, tablecloth, once you cut it in half, then you'd have to sew it back together. So I would have waited to do this, but again, since we're kind of like a cooking show, I'm going to do I'm not doing a particularly good job. I like part of this shadow in here. The little scissors, if you have them, work really well, obviously, on the more delicate things. Okay, so there I have part of my bird. And you can see it better than I can, but I have to, again, decide where am I putting Mr. Bird. And maybe... Maybe the bird is going to go like that, which is a little funny, but I think that's what the bird is going to do. Some of the artists who particularly loved working with collage were called surrealists, and surrealism was a movement that started 
as a literary movement and poetry. And those artists liked working by chance. In other words, not too much planning. If you're a very precise and planning person, you can make the most precise collage, measure things, use a ruler to cut things out, use an exacto blade. But if you're like me and you like to kind of work quickly and play, I always think of art as play, and the Surrealists were very big on the idea of playing and just letting things happen, happy accidents. So I'm cutting this bird out, not as neatly as I might have otherwise, but I'm trimming him down a little. And then I'm gonna see where the bird is going to go. Hmm. Now, thinking about chance here, I just because I wasn't measuring, but this fits nicely to cover that area that I did not, that's ragged, if I didn't want it to be ragged, or I could even pick it up and put this on here and then glue my bird down. The other thing I could do is just say I want a piece of my bird, right? We don't have to have the whole bird. Maybe the bird is just going to be a little piece coming in here. That's kind of nice too. Actually, now that I've done that, I like that even better. So I'm going to cut the poor bird. There he is. And what's happening is I'm creating a lot of mess, a lot of scraps. Um, I would save these for other collages. You could just put them in a recycling bag, but you may end up, who knows, needing some feathers for something else. And I'm going to use the Elmer's glue this time. This is an old one. If yours is old, you might have to peel off like I just did the little uh, dried stuff at the top or even put a needle in it. And I'm just trying to get the glue from the bottom, kind of like an old ketchup bottle. And when I used to teach young children, I always talk about just putting dots on. So you can see I'm just putting, rather than smothering glue on the whole thing. You can also do that. You could take a brush and uh, glue it down, but I just put a few dots here, and now I'm going to position my bird wherever I want it to be, which is right above the word New Jersey. I don't know why, but it fits. I think, again, I'm just using chance, and it so, just so happens that this rectangle around New Jersey is exactly the same size as the width of my bird. So that's why I put it there, no other special reason. So you get the idea and you could keep adding. I have my butterfly, I didn't use the butterfly. And some of the things that you take as inspiration in the beginning, you may say, I really don't want to use that. You may end up only using 50% or you may end up needing more things and adding those. So you just kind of play it by ear as you go along. So I have my butterfly and I think the butterfly is gonna do two things. It's going to help hold this part that I didn't glue so well down. And it's going to go on top, just like the bird went on top of the map. And you notice the bird is sort of buckling up from the glue. The glue stick, you're likely to get um, a kind of smoother thing. Good thing to remember though, the, the Elmer's glue dries clear. So even if you have like white dots of glue, tomorrow it should be clear. Okay, so here's my butterfly. And I don't know where to put it. It's hard to work upside down, but where shall it go? Maybe to balance out the bird. I'm putting it here. Now I might change my mind it's a sticker, I might be able to peel it off, or I might not. So, there's my butterfly. Now, do I want the sea urchin? Not so much. What else do I have that speaks to, now that I have a shore picture? Ah, this is another map from Canada. Just so happens, it has a lighthouse on it. So, I'm gonna tear that off. And it's interesting, this is a much cheaper, plainer paper, the map paper, than 
the beautiful paper that your free uh, calendars come with that shiny paper, the glossy paper. So there's going to be different textures. So now I might say, well, do I want to have a lighthouse in here? Why not? Where there is water, there's often a lighthouse. I'm cutting out the hay bale because I don't particularly want the hay bale in there. I'm on this one. I'm not going to um, silhouette it entirely. I'm going to keep part of the sky, and I'm going to silhouette part of it, but leave part of it with the background, if that makes sense. So I'm cutting around this, but. You can see on the lower half, I've left the ocean because I like that blue. And I also like the sky. Now that's probably going to be too big to go anywhere here. So I'm going to modify that and cut it down. Now again, this would be a good place for you to measure or draw or use something like that. Or you could wing it like me and just keep Cutting it down, whittling it away. I don't know if anybody here has whittled wood before. And think about where is my lighthouse? That in the end, guess what? I may have told you the wrong thing. I may end up silhouetting the whole thing, or I may keep a little bit of it here. Hmm. What to do. That's the hardest part of collage, the decision making. And you can ask if you you have people, um, if you're not alone, you can ask friends, relatives. Um, personally, in, I've had students who do that. They ask the people sitting around them. I like to just do it myself. For me, it's like solving a puzzle. If anybody here likes to do jigsaw puzzles or any kind of puzzles, uh, crossword puzzles. Art for me is kind of always like solving a puzzle. So I just keep doing things until I decide it's done. And that's, I guess, the same thing if any of you are writers and you've written a poem or you kind of keep cutting away. Do I really need the whole lighthouse? I don't know. I've already cut away part of it, so it's not not symmetrical on one side. In the end, guess what? But it's better to do it that way than the other way where if I'd wanted the background I'd have to go back and add it. So this is part of the process for me is playing around with it and I don't even know if I want to put it there. Now that I've cut it out so nicely maybe it should go here instead. Hmm. Well, if I was doing this, I'm going to use the glue stick again, which I forgot to put the cap on. Um, you just want to turn your glue stick up a little bit. If you turn it up a whole lot, like kids tend to do this, you'll make a mess like I did last time. So just just enough, sort of like if, you're, if you brush your teeth with toothpaste, you don't really need to squeeze out the whole big thing of toothpaste like you're if you have a grandchild might do when they're learning to brush their teeth, etc. Now I'm putting this on, but there's something that's bothering me because this says C-E-A-N, and I know that's ocean, and I don't know if I want to cover that up because now it just says Ian. Hm. Oh well, I'll just go for it. But again, I might have trimmed that even more. So you get the idea and you just keep going until you're finished. And there are some artists, one of my favorite um, American artists um, is named uh, Joseph Cornell and he did a lot of collages. He also made a lot of boxes and did three dimensional collages. And he had a saying, I think something that, or I read somewhere that he didn't think anything was ever done. Like he would make things and give them to friends. And then he'd say, can I borrow that? box, that sculpture I made for you back, because he felt they were almost like living things. So you might stop here and put this, you know, on your bureau or on your kitchen table and look at it for a few days and say, you know what, it really needs XYZ. It needs a swimmer or it needs 
a sun or whatever it needs and you can keep adding to it. So that's pretty much all I have. I just say that you can use other things with collage such as if you happen to have any stencils around, you could use cookie cutters, you could use, I don't know if you can see that stencil there. These were from the dollar store. And you can use simple things. This is a roll of tape. I could, if I wanted to cut a circle out, maybe I just wanted the bird's face in a circle, I could do this and then just cut around there and I have a circular thing. So you can get creative. This is kind of an interesting shape. So you can start looking at things that you have around and using them. If you happen to have things like, I think, is this a protractor? I'm so yep. good. I'm that, you know, something like this, that's fine. But you don't need something like that. You could use, you want a small circle? Take your glue stick. Take your salt shaker, whatever. Um, a big plate, if you want a big circle, etc. So I hope you've enjoyed this and go forth and make beautiful collages for yourself and think of some, because this is a, a difficult time for all of us, um, I'm trying to think of some joyful things. I have my word joy here that I made a few years ago, but I think we could all use a little joy in our lives. So I like nature in particular, you might have figured that out in the ocean, so there's my, my end. Wishful thinking, I probably will not get to the Jersey Shore in the foreseeable future, but that doesn't mean I can't bring the Jersey Shore to me. So that's what I've done today. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Rebecca, so much. Um, I've started. I haven't finished, but I... Oh, that's I beautiful. Started. I had a, a travel magazine, so I took your inspiration where I was like, all right, let me find a picture that I place I want to go. And then I had these, like, basically sheets of origami kind of paper that had all these cool shapes on them. And so I just started cutting them out and it's nowhere near done. So I'll post it. Can I see it again? I want to see the flowers on the bottom. They look like lupin. Yeah. Which are some of my favorite. And we go to Canada every summer and we drive. We do. We're not this summer, of course. But we drive through New Brunswick and we drive up north and if you go early enough, which we never normally do, you see those growing wild in the ditches. Wow. There's a great children's book called The Lupin Lady, too, which is one of my fate. Barbara Cooley, I think, or Cooney. Cooney. Yeah, I was really drawn to the color. And fortunately, because I measured against my paper, I ended up with a cool strip of them left. So I was like, great, I'm going to figure out other ways to use this. Right. And I didn't talk about overlapping, although I did some of that, but that's a big thing too, of course, is overlapping. Yeah, I was thinking that might be really fun to play with. So um, yeah, I just got started, but I'm going to work on this for a little while. So thank you.